Hello viewers and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is uh, proximal atrial tachycardia, uh, which is also known as PET or PAT. You know. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. You know. And if you need more information about uh, any disease or any medical condition, uh, in that case, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And the link for the website is just below this video in the description area. So you can click that link to visit our website. And when I come to the topic, uh, what is uh, proximal atrial tachycardia? You know, you know it's a type of the arrhythmia you know, or the irregular heartbeat. Uh, you know, the proximal means uh, that the episode of arrhythmia begins and ends uh, abruptly you know. and the actual means that uh, arrhythmia starts in the upper chambers of the heart you know. there are four chambers two upper ones two lower ones you know. so uh, the upper chambers uh, of the heart you know which is known the atria you know and uh, the tachycardia means uh, that heart is beating uh, uh, abnormally fast you know so the proximal atrial tachycardia means uh, or it's also known as like a proximal supraventricular tachycardia PSVT you know so this alternative name which is used and the other types of the tachycardia that uh, start in the atria or the upper parts include like uh, uh, atrial flutter or maybe atrial fibrillation, you know, or wolf parkinson white syndrome, you know. So these are the other types of the tachycardia, you know. And the, the proximal atrial tachycardia can cause uh, an adult's heart rate to increase from between 60 and 100 beats per minute, you know, uh, to 130, 200, 230 beats per minute, you know. So, infants and the children, uh, they normally have a higher uh, heart rate than the adults, you know, like between 100 and 130, you know. And when an infant or the child has uh, this condition you know their heart uh, uh, rate will increase it will be greater than 220 beats per minute you know and uh, it is the most common form of tachycardia in the infants and the children and in most cases uh, it's not life-threatening uh, but it can be like uncomfortable like uh, in rare cases some people with uh, wolf parkinson white syndrome may develop a rapid heart rate then that is life threatening, you know, if it's too fast, you know. Yeah, but it's rare. Uh, you know, it occurs uh, when the electrical signals uh, starting in the heart's atrium, they fire irregularly, you know. So this acts uh, like, uh, like it affects the electrical signals which are transmitted from the sinoatrial node, you know, which is your heart's like natural pacemaker, you know. So your heart rate will speed up. So this prevents your heart from having uh, enough time to fill with the blood before pumping blood out of the uh, uh, rest of the body, you know, as a result. Uh, your body may not receive enough blood or oxygen, you know. So it, the heart beats too fast that uh, it does, the, the chambers of the heart, they don't fill properly and it pumps it, you know, so as a result body uh, do not get up en enough blood supply you know uh, you know women they are at high risk if compared to men you know and uh, the emotional health can also affect your risk of having this uh, condition you know and uh, if you uh, if you are physically exhausted or have uh, like uh, anxiety you are at high risk and your uh, risk for this condition uh, also goes up if you drink excessive amounts of uh, uh, leak drugs or drink too much alcohol etc you know so uh, this way you are you're more likely to develop uh, uh, this condition you know if compared to the person who is not alcoholic you know or not taking any kind of the drugs you know 
and uh, uh, any heart issues such as like a history of heart attacks or mitral valve disease it can increase the risk and the children who have congenital heart diseases they are at a high risk of uh, uh, proximal uh, atrial tachycardia you know so these are the risk groups you know uh, the next thing is what are the symptoms you know you know some people don't experience symptoms uh, but if you do it may be lightheadedness it may be dizziness palpitations or increased heart rate you know angina chest pain uh, breathlessness or uh, uh, in rare cases it may be the cardiac arrest or maybe unconsciousness you know but it's rare you know uh, well once you present yourself to a doctor your doctor will uh, ask you the questions about you know about uh, the heart rate or any symptoms you know so this is known as uh, a medical history and then he will perform the physical examination you know so he will check your heart rate pulse uh, listen to your heart uh, check your blood pressure and uh, if he suspects then he may order like uh, ecgs you know to diagnose this condition and ecg measures the electrical activity of your heart you know and uh, uh, you know it, it can be difficult to catch your episode of uh, this condition you know so your doctor may want you to have uh, uh, another test like the heart monitor where you will uh, where the device you know and the leads uh, will be attached to your body so this heart monitor will record uh, the activity of your heart uh, continuously for maybe 24 to 48 hours you know uh, so it will uh, like uh, uh, note every single activity so after 48 hours you will uh, send back this device to the hospital where it will be decoded and uh, they will see if there is any abnormality was detected you know? so it's very useful test you know? uh, once diagnosed and what are the treatment options you know you know most people they don't need treatment and uh, your doctor may recommend treatment or the medications if your episodes occur very often or they last for a considerable length of time you know? in that case your doctor I may advise uh, or recommend the medication, uh, prescribe the medications, you know. And uh, you know the vagal nerve maneuvers, uh, they slow your heart rate by stimulating your vagus nerves, you know. So your doctor may suggest using one of the vagus nerve uh, maneuvers uh, during the episode of bed, like uh, uh, a carpet sinus massage, you know, or maybe applying gentle pressure to closed eyelids you know or maybe uh, well salva maneuver which is means that uh, uh, pressing your nostrils together while exhaling through the nose you know or dive reflux so dive reflux means that or which means that impressing your face or body to cool water So the immersing uh, will help you to control your heartbeat. You know. Next thing is medications. You know. Well, the medications like uh, uh, Rethmol or maybe Tembocor, you know, uh, they are helpful. And your doctor may give you an injection uh, uh, that you can take during an episode of this condition. You know, if there's uh, a very fast heartbeat you know and the lifestyle changes are also recommended like uh, quit smoking or walking or healthy diet so these are also helpful you know uh, you know the complications of this condition uh, vary with the rate and the duration of the abnormally fast beating heart you know and the complications uh, uh, they are very based on whether you have an underlying heart condition, you know. And uh, some people with this one may be at high risk of blood clots. And uh, this, and uh, like, 
in those cases the doctors usually prescribe the medications such as like um, paradox and these medications uh, thin the blood like aspirin etc you know and uh, reduce the chance of uh, blood clots thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know and please do not forget to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel Thank you.